There we go. So let give you a minute just to resolve that little window that pops up. And hi, everyone. Welcome to our session at today's Tech for Teaching Day sessions on DIY video and introduction to Panopto. My name is Jesslyn Wilkinson. If we haven't met before, I'm the Educational Technologies Consultant in Teaching and Learning. And my email is jwilkinson. Nothing fancy, Jay Wilkinson at conestogac.on.ca. But you can reach me through the proxy email with teaching and learning as well. Uh, and I'm here to help coach you and support you as you incorporate technology into your teaching, whatever that looks like. So for Deb, it looked like completely revamping the delivery for her program, the program, the courses within her program, uh, and boosting their national numbers, tripling their. Um, their enrollment in what was that like two years three years Deb yeah very quick uh for Shelly sometimes tell you if it's okay if I pick on you sometimes yep. it just looks like the two of us getting together and talking about her teaching and things she wishes she was doing differently in her teaching um and working out a solution together and sometimes it looks like bigger conversations like what technology incorporation into your program really looks like uh, and how we scaffold that through the years or through the semesters for students so whatever that looks like i hope you'll stay in touch you know teaching and learning is here to serve you and help you as you develop into your teaching practice and i see so many familiar faces out there hi mariana hi lisa hi brent thank you so much for your your warm message uh, hi, Sheena. Hi, everyone out there. If I haven't uh, had the chance to call out your name, I'm still admitting people from the, the waiting room as they kind of come in. But today we'll be talking about Panopto, which is a brand new service that is released to the college. It's a video hosting service, much like YouTube used to serve some of our needs. Now we have Panopto for more of that closed audience internal feel. And so today we're going to take a look at different ways that you can use Panopto to serve your teaching and students learning and different ways that you can expect it to work or you can get it to work in ways um, that might substitute things that you're doing in Zoom and ways that it interacts and supports with Zoom as well. <clears throat> So as we move through today's session, don't hesitate that if you would like to, you're more than welcome to turn on your mic and ask a question. Just so you know, for the purposes of um, sharing the information from the Tech for Teaching days, these videos will be posted to our YouTube channel and they will be posted on our Faculty Learning Hub. So please participate in a way that you would feel comfortable knowing that the recording will be publicly posted and available. You're welcome to use the chat window as well, direct message me, whatever you feel most comfortable with. And just be patient with me if I don't get your question right away because I'm juggling a lot of things right now. All right, with that, let's talk about our outcomes for today or our objectives. So by the end of today's session, my goal is to improve or advance your current comfort level with incorporating Panopto into your courses. So we'll practice using Panopto to create or edit your own videos. Today is going to be a working and practice, practice session for you. And we'll identify any next steps that you might have for your learning to use Panopto to serve your teaching and students learning. And I'll be giving you some follow up resources as well. I was sharing with Shelly a little earlier that you'll never come to a workshop of mine without leaving with some resources that you can continue to support yourself with. And those are always found on our faculty learning hub. So I'll be connecting you with the resources that are there. And I wanna kick off today with a little intro question or a little set of intro polls. I have a few questions to ask that help me take the temperature of the room and see what it is that you would like to do with videos in your teaching that you're not currently doing, the devices that you might use, and your current comfort level with creating videos. So I'm gonna go ahead and launch that Zoom poll. Make sure you hit the submit button at the bottom.
All right, I have almost everyone participating. So I'll give it another second or two, just in case there's somebody who's reaching for that submit button. And I'm gonna end that poll and share it back to you all so you can see the results. So when I'm asking, the first question was, do you imagine yourself doing screen recordings, video of yourself talking or demonstrating in a space or both or other? Many of you said both. I wanna be able to do both of those things. I'm not, I'm not sure which one, Jesslyn, just teach me how to do everything and then I'll do something with it, which is the, the gist that I always get in this session. People want flexibility in, in variety in the kinds of videos that they might produce. And if we take a look at the options for the devices, we see that flexibility and variety there as well. Lots of us are working on Windows 10 computers, but lots of us are not as well. Uh, so be patient and acknowledge that there's going to be tidbits and advice shared today that hopefully might tailor to one or audience or the other. But I do try to universalize the experience across device. And then the last question I asked was, how would you describe your comfort level? Uh, so a lot of us might create recordings regularly, about a third of us, but about half of us make some, but we're looking to improve our skills. Um, and there's almost no one in the audience who has never created a recording. Just be mindful that the, the scope of our skills as an audience is broad. Many of us have some experience, we're looking to enhance it. This is a great opportunity if you are one of those people who says, I'm a, you know, I make a lot of videos, I'm just looking to see what's coming next. Your advice is going to be really well warranted to sharing with your colleagues. So if you ever have advice that is very welcome here, please post it in the chat window or share it with me individually hey. or, or use your, um, hey, hey. or uh, use your, uh, like, um, I forgot my train of thought right there. <laughs> it's happened to us all, it's fine. Use whatever means you want to send me your questions or comments if you have advice to share was what I was gonna say. And if you are at the early end of your skill set or your skills development, know that your questions are really valuable here. And so wherever you are in your journey of, of using video in your teaching, whatever you want to offer is very welcome here. There is always a place for it. I'm gonna stop sharing that poll and let's kick start into the learning. That's always my favorite part. So the first thing that I would suggest is for those of you that are out there that are using a mobile device or have a mobile device or want to use a mobile device to do what we're about to do, you can download the Panopto app for Android or iOS. It'll work on your any mobile device that is not a laptop. If you're using a laptop, you do not need to download Panopto. You can, but you do not need to. Not the way I'm going to show you how to access it. So if this is part of your journey, start by downloading the app. And then I want you to hold at the point of the sign in. I don't want you to sign in to the app yet. Because when we pull Panopto into your Econostoga course, it's gonna automatically create your account for you. And that's a fully licensed account. So I don't want you to do the sign in yet. Just go ahead and grab the app if you have a moment or two. And I want to take a moment to just compare Panopto versus Zoom, because I think that there's some um, important criteria here. So when we consider Zoom, we know Zoom's a video creation tool. It also happens to be a synchronous classroom tool, and there's no replacement for Zoom as a synchronous classroom tool. It is so well equipped to do that. But a lot of us kind of like hack it to be a video creation tool, right? We record a video in Zoom so that we can kind of like share that to our students because we're really comfortable with it and we know it. Panopto is a video creation tool. It can be a replacement for how you were using Zoom to take recordings that you would, that like you're only planning on building them as a recording to post in your course. So it can do that for you. Whoops. But it's also a lot of other things. So Panopto is, unlike Zoom, Panopto is a long-term video storage tool. You can store videos in Panopto indefinitely. Zoom, we only get them for one year, right? That's why they're really great for storing our classroom recordings. Uh, however, Panopto also does like triple, quadruple, quintuple duty because it's not just a video creation tool, it's an editing tool, 
a video quiz tool, a video assignment tool. This is an all-in-one video station that you can use across a variety of purposes in your teaching. We're not gonna touch on all of them today. I'm sorry, I can't give you one hour and a half long workshop that goes into detail on all of those skills with Panopto. What I'll encourage you to do is after today's session, you can always look out for offerings from teaching and learning about those advanced Panopto skills, or you can always connect with me one-on-one -on -one and we can go through those. Or, you know, I already have a faculty learning hub post that has the information available to you and I'll be sharing it in the chat today. You'll have the chance to pull that open and further your own learning through self-directed online resources. So I hope that you feel supported in knowing that you're not gonna get everything out of today's session. You're gonna get a lot of things, but you can take it where you need to. Oh, Jackie, thank you for sharing it already in the chat window. <laughs> I, have, I have my fan club out there and they're doing good work for me, thank you. All right, so Jackie shared the link to that hub tour. Okay, so let's dive in. Everybody ready? Now, I'm about to do a live demonstration. If you're comfortable with going ahead and just following along, you are welcome to do that. However, if you're the kind of person that processes better by just watching and kind of like digesting or asking questions, I am going to have a 10 minute period of time after this demonstration session where you just sort of like tinker with Panopto. Okay, so you choose what works best for you. The tinkering time, it's totally up to you how far you take it with Panopto. All right, so let's dive in. Panopto, unlike all along in the app or in Conestoga, yes. Panopto is unique. So this is a proprietary service that we have purchased. It is totally unique in that you do not access it or download it from the IT website. It lives in your eConestoga courses as an external learning tool. So let's take a look. I'm just here in my sandbox. Let's take a look at how I'm, I'm going to suggest that you could set up your Panopto in your courses. Now you would do this for each of the courses where you wanna use Panopto video, and then you can copy it forward when you copy elements forward from course shell to course shell. So I have a little sub module here, a little module that's called instructor resources, and it's hidden. And that might be a way that you would wanna do it. So you would click add a module, call it instructor resources, and then just along the top, you would choose to hide that module. Let me jump in there. And you can see that my module currently is empty, but I'm gonna go into existing activities. And in the external learning tools option, you can either scroll around until you find Panopto, or if you're like me, your search bar is your best friend, you can just search for Panopto. And Panopto is going to come up. It's the only one that's there. And when you click that, it literally puts a link. It does two things. So it puts a link in your course to your Panopto platform. And it, if you're doing it for the first time, it generates your account. So it's doing a little bit of work in the background there. So this is a hidden resource. It's only me who can see it or who can access it. And I kind of like that for now because um, I might have videos in there that I don't necessarily want all of my students to view all of the videos in that YouTube look and feel. So let me open up Panopto video and kind of give you an orientation to the Panopto experience. You can see it's still opening as like an embed in Econestoga. You can work with it this way, or you can uh, choose to use the pop out button right here to open it up in a new browser tab. And if you prefer to work that way, you could like favorite or, or star that browser tab, and then you would have it like just in your browser menu. For me, I like to jump into Panopto from my course. So you can see that I've got a big old search bar here along the top. I've got this create button that lets me start to create videos. And you'll notice that I have a couple of folders here. So I'm in Jesslyn Wilkinson sandbox. But if I expand that open, you can see that I've got a bunch of folders here. 
And so what I like to say is that if you're in one course and you're working in Panopto, you can easily use this to jump to any other course and you can work on that course's videos as well. Keep that as food for thought for later. But we're gonna stay here in Jesslyn Wilkinson's sandbox. And you can see that here in my sandbox, I have one, two, three different videos that I've already posted in here. So what I would do typically is I would come in and I would hit that create button and I might upload a video that I've already taken. For those of you who might use QuickTime or Zoom to create videos elsewhere, that's an easy place for you to do it. I see a good question in the chat window. Katrina, there's no dumb question, so ask away. Um, yeah, so I'm just looking in my sandbox and, and should I have an instructor resources tab? And if I don't, can I create no. it? Yeah, you can create it. Okay. Yeah. Just at the and very, I, you know how your table of contents kind of runs down the side? At the very yeah. bottom, you can create a module. Okay. Um, and you don't have if, to do that. Uh, I was going to say, if I don't have one, I can still do it otherwise. Yes, absolutely. Okay. It's an external learning tool. You can put it anywhere you like in your course. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. No dumb questions. It's a good one. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you can upload any media that you want. Maybe you have a Zoom video. Maybe you have a QuickTime video. Deb, I'm looking at you. Uh, anything that you want, you can kind of pull in here. There is no storage limit. So go ahead and put your videos in here. What I do want you to know is that the reason why you put Panopto into a course is because it's smart enough to take permissions from your course to dictate who gets to see those videos and who gets to work with them in what ways. So the Panopto is in the uh, external learning tools. So if I go back to my table of contents in here, my instructor resources, existing activities, external learning tools for those who need it. All right. So that's one option. If you have media already that's maybe sitting in a YouTube channel and you want to pull it over or sitting in your Zoom and you want to pull it over, go ahead and do that. It's quick download and then upload. And then make sure that you delete it off your device because you do not want those big videos crowding up the storage capacity on your device. The other thing that you can do is you can use the built-in Panopto capture. And this is really fun to play with. So I'll do a little brief demonstration. And then I'm gonna off, I'm gonna show you how to share these videos in your courses. And we'll do the practice time after that. So Panopto Capture, I promised you that just like in Zoom, you can use Panopto to take and record video. So if you need to record new ones, it's right here. And let's pull open the Panopto Capture. Now this is a web tool, it's a web capture tool. And it's a really simple video player. A lot of the faculty that I first tested this with said, oh my gosh, like it's pretty straightforward. I kind of really like it. So we'll see if you all agree with that today. You can see that I have to select my camera to create a recording. I can configure my audio settings, my video settings. And just like in Zoom, I can share my screens and apps. It looks a little different, so I wanna make sure I demonstrate it. And you can see it's doing an audio check for me right now. That wavy line is following my voice and that's exactly what's happening there. Now to demonstrate the next step, I can only use my camera in one place at a time. So I'm gonna turn my camera off here in Zoom so that I can turn it on in Panopto. There we go, video, there we go. Hi everyone, so there's me in Panopto. There's no virtual backgrounds in this world, so you all now know that I have my office in my bedroom. There we go. There's my blur kicking in. Uh, you can see that I can control the blur right here, or I control, oh, there is a couple of new virtual backgrounds. I can decide whether to turn on or off smart camera, which is just a setting that uh, recognizes whether you're in a group or an individual. I have like a picture in picture view if I want to showcase something else on my device, like my screen share. And then I can opt to full screen this video recorder. I can go ahead and customize my audio here if I need to. And then I can go ahead and share my screens and apps. When I hit that share button, just like in Zoom, if you have multiple screens, you can share multiple screens. 
If you want to share just a particular window, like my PowerPoint presentation, I can do that. Or I can share any one of my browser tabs right there. If I'm sharing a browser tab, I might be sharing a video. So you'd also want to be able to share your tab audio. Katrina. Um, if you are sharing your screen, is the, your video going to capture this particular window? So if you're like siphoning through your win windows that are open, trying to find the right one, if you have, you know, your email and all these kinds of things in your other windows, will that show up in your screen? Yeah, if you choose to share your screen, you're sharing your whole everything you do on that screen. Okay, so make sure you have the other things closed yeah. or unbusied. Okay, thanks. Yeah, yeah, like anything. So let me hit that share button. There we go. And you can see that Panopto starts to um, prioritize the screen that you're about to share. It's just showing my PowerPoint presentation. And now to jump back to Panopto to kind of start the presentation, you can see it does a little picture in picture kind of thing. Here's my PowerPoint presentation and here's my video. I don't want you to worry. I know that this video feed is really large here. It will not be this size in your recording. And in fact, Panopto does something really cool. So don't, this is just a preview. Don't worry about it looking exactly like this. From here, you would just hit that record button and start to make that recording. It's going to automatically upload over into your Panopto and you'll see it appear here. You can see that I've done this before because I have a video that's already here that demonstrates much of the same thing. So this is the Panopto webcam capture. If you want to use it as an alternative to building videos in Zoom. In, a, in just one minute, I'm going to share, I'm going to show you how to start posting videos into your courses. And then I'm going to offer you some free time to, to just experiment. So bear with me for just a second. I'm going to close the web capture and come back here to my, um, my Panopto. And I'm going to allow a few people into the session. So You've made a recording in Panopto or you've uploaded a recording. The next thing that you would do is you would hit that share button. You can see that you've got a variety of settings when you hover over a video. One is settings, share, edit, stats, if you wanna see students watching your videos or delete. The settings button will get you into each one of this. So I don't know, like it's kind of redundant to me, but whatever. To post this video in my course, I would just hit that share button. And here you can see that you in my in my Panopto account, you're either a creator or a viewer. Remember that Panopto takes its permissions from your course itself. Whoever is designated an instructor in your course shell is a creator. And so they have that green create button that you see right here. They can put stuff into the Panopto account. But whoever is designated as a student or a viewer does not have that green create button. They just see the videos themselves. So all of your students by virtue of being in your courses are going to have access to your videos. Deb, this is taking me back to the days when we were using stream and managing those permissions. <laughs> okay. If you want to change those permissions in any way, shape or form, you absolutely can. There's a change button here and you can change it to restricted, which is what it currently is, restricted to only the people in your course. Or you can open it up to anybody at Conestoga or you can open it up to anybody anywhere, okay? So it'll be set to restricted and then you can choose whether you link or embed it. Now. The link is great, it's perfectly fine. It's all well and good. The embed is usually my favorite. That's usually the way I like to do things. So I might click that embed. I would definitely make sure to turn on the captions and I would copy that embed code. Back in my course, remember that at the beginning, I put my Panopto into a hidden uh, module. So now I have to post those videos for my students. And so instead of saying the videos in my instructor resources folder, go and find it, I would probably say to students in week one, I've created 
a video file and I would put in my embed code right there. And I would hit that save button, give me a second. And when students come to that content piece in week one, when they open it up and you kind of still get the videos right there for them. Yeah. So this is my Panopto in a nutshell kind of uh, orientation. Remember, we started this by building a little module, add a module called Instructor Resources. I chose to make mine hidden so that I could have sort of like a construction zone where I did like my editing and stuff like that. And then we use the existing activities to choose an external learning tool and go and find Panopto, whether you were scrolling or whether you were using uh, the search. Once that external learning tool is in there, you've got your Panopto account. You know that you can use the create button to test either uploading media using the Panopto capture. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take 10 minutes in just a minute or two, we're gonna take 10 minutes and you can practice doing exactly this. If you've been doing exactly this already and you feel comfortable with it, what I'll encourage you to do is look into some of the settings or to this edit option here in Panopto. First, I'll field any questions that are coming up. So if you have a question for me, now's the time to ask before I set, build those breakout rooms uh, where you will work individually to try out Panopto in your course. Heidi, what's your question? Um, I see the edit option there. Does that mean we can actually edit our video once it's uploaded? Like say we upload a video and then we realize we said a wrong word or something like we can cut it or something? Yes, you can. Okay. That's great. That's, that is the hallmark of why Panopto is going to be better for you than Zoom. Zoom, yeah, that's great. Yeah. So you now have the ability to edit your videos. And thank you again to the person who shared the post beforehand. For those of you who are looking to explore some of those extra features or some of that edit button or the, the extra stuff, uh, you can find help resources in the link that I've just shared you in the chat. There's tutorial videos in there. So uh, I'm going to build breakout rooms. In those breakout rooms, you're going to be independent or individual. And I will put a 10 minute timer on those so that you have 10 minutes to just give it a try to just see how it works. Um, I have 20, 19, there we go. All right. So any other questions that I can answer before I open up those breakout rooms? Okay, get in and get your hands dirty. I'm gonna hit those open rooms. If you need I, any I, help- I posted a, a couple of questions in the chat oh, room. Yeah, so. Let me check, check those. Um, one, I see, are all current Zoom recordings being converted to, yeah, we're gonna to touch on that next, Leopold. And then with the edit feature, can you stop and start a recording? Yes. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. And also, can you capture a virtual camera through OBS Studio? So OBS is its own recording tool. You would just upload it into Panopto. Into what? You would just upload the video file that you get from OBS into Panopto. Well, I use the OBS Studio to create a, a virtual camera for my Lightboard, which then is recorded in Zoom. Yeah, so you can do the same thing in Panopto. Okay, that's that's a new wrinkle. I'm not sure how I do that. Well, the much the same way that you might do in Zoom. So you would oh, use it just did a, well in Zoom. It it I set up OBS Studio first, then I go to Zoom, and everything just works the way it is. And the virtual camera is set up through OBS. That's all I know. Yeah. So you could you set up OBS, try it out in the next ten minutes, Leopold, and you would just set up your OBS Studio the way you usually do. Oh, it will take then, me almost ten minutes to set up my Lightboard and OBS and get it all fired up and that. So, okay, uh, then maybe just practice with putting Panopto into your course, and you can always test that out in the future and reach out to me and Derek with any questions. Okay, thank you. All right, jump into the breakout rooms, and uh, if you have any questions, just hit that "Ask for Help" button.
All right, so I'm going to pick things back up from here. So I think that probably many of us are at a lot of different places right now in um, what we were able to kind of experiment with while we were in our experimentation time. But I wanna talk about a few tips, tricks, and suggestions. And you're more than welcome to turn on your mic and ask any questions that you have kind of at this point in time. So again, I am recording. So don't be worried if you haven't come back yet or you're not too, too ready. Um, I see we have one question right off the hop. Heidi, what's the question? Hi there, I have a question about, I'm just gonna go into the screen. So when I was doing a video after I was done, it said you can record new or redo. What would be the difference? So redoing is, I didn't like that take. I made a lot of mistakes. I'm gonna yeah. retake the exact same video uh, and it's basically it's gonna like store it in the same spot and it's just gonna basically okay. overwrite the keep file. the same and title you, all that okay yeah exactly so any settings that you had configured anything like that it'll put you back into recording mode versus just having it save into your account and it's good okay. to go yeah. and then I, I sorry I have one more question I don't know if there's someone else who has their hand up nope it's all you okay um I got ahead of myself maybe a little bit and I I uploaded a, just a brief video I had Perfect. Sounds and then no, was, that's not ahead of you. That's what you you had the time. So go okay. for it. And then I was trying to see about inserting like a caption on it or something, but I wasn't sure how to do that. Like I, I was able to type in the caption, but I wasn't sure how to actually insert it in the to. video. You oh, don't okay. have to insert your own captions. Panopto will automatically caption your videos. It just takes time. So I was sharing, and I forgot to share this before and, you left into your room. Sorry. I wanted to, you to just get hands on. Sorry to interrupt you. I just want to be very clear what I'm talking about. So I'm not talking about closed captioning. I'm talking about like I'm typing in something that I want to appear in the video. Like what was this nurse doing wrong or something like that? Oh, so you're going to want to look, Heidi, at yeah. the interactive quiz. Okay. Okay. Uh, and you can also, I'll show you a few of the things that you could look. There's lots of different choice for you okay. in that. But okay, thank great. you. That's a good tie into where we're going next. Okay, thanks and so then much. Lauren, I see you have a question as well. Yeah, and this is completely new to me. So if everybody else already knows the answer to this, don't feel like you have to answer. I'll just do my own research. But one of the things I found, I pretty proud of myself for getting on there, doing the recording, tried to share a screen to practice. And it seemed like it was a bit sort of what happens to me when I use MS Teams that like you can't, the screen was somewhere else, like on Zoom, you know, you can kind of scroll through. But if you're looking at yourself in the video, you can't really have the screen page up to change the slides type thing. That's normal, right? Yeah. Or is there a way? Yeah, that it? is normal. It's not like the most comfortable experience because our experience is completely defined by Zoom at this point. We want it to work like Zoom and act like Zoom and be like Zoom. But Panopto is not Zoom. <laughs> and so it has its own way of working. And so when you're kind of in that record, like if you have a presentation that you pulled up, your recording is over there in your browser tab and it's not like overlaid on what you're doing right now. So my recommendation is get comfortable with using the keyboard shortcut alt tab to flip between the two so that you can hit the record button over there, come over here, go through your content and your presentation and then flip back over to stop the recording with minimal editing for yourself. Yeah, I hope that that helps. <laughs> yeah, totally, thanks. Yeah, I did find it a little uncomfortable before um, as I started using it because uh, my experience was so heavily informed by Zoom and that's how I understood it. Um, so we'll get more comfortable with it as time goes by. All right, so some points that I forgot to note uh, that Deb reminded me of is when you do your recording, it's gonna need to process Panopto is powerful. It does a lot of fantastic things for you, such as automatic transcriptions, uh, deeply embedded search functionality. It does smart chapters, which we're about to take a look at, and a whole host of other things. When you record a video, you need to give it the same amount of time to process as it took to record the video. So if you have a five minute video, you're gonna to need to make sure that there's five minutes of time to process it. If you did an hour long recording, that's gonna need an hour to process. Now, I don't always recommend that, you know, an hour long thing is probably a classroom recording, which is happening a bit differently, 
but um, I want you to be aware that there's a processing time here. And so if you see a video and it's kind of gray like this one, chances are it's saying something like processing time and then it's doing that processing. So I'm gonna next step on to two different skills or two different um, items. So one being that, let me just pop back over to my presentation. Okay, so if you were watching the Monday message board, you know that now when you record a video into Zoom, it also gets stored in Panopto. And uh, for now, you have a recording in both places. You have a recording in Zoom and a recording in Panopto. For the future, those recordings are going to be automatically stored in Panopto. And this is to make sure that you have the recording for longer than a year if you want to. And uh, B, it's to manage or help um, our agreement with how much storage gets captured in Zoom. Our storage in Panopto is unlimited, so we store them over there. So uh, I want you to remind you that when we first started looking at Panopto, one of the things that I did was expand the folder. And if you look in here, you have a default folder called meeting recordings. And this folder is unique. It is not attached to one course. It is attached to you as an individual. So this folder holds all of your meeting recordings from Zoom. And so you can see I have a few from today, one from Tony Bates uh, keynote address and the innovators panel. And it's just a chronological list of all of the recordings that you have taken. So when you have a Zoom recording, now you have the choice for a little while, you have the choice. You can go and get the recording link from Zoom like you have been doing or in any Panopto, right? It doesn't have to be the one that's in your specific course, but in this folder, you would get the share link for your Panopto, for your Zoom meeting from your Panopto account. So this is the link that you could post in your course, or if you wanted to, you could embed it in your course. Okay, so that's all Zoom meetings. All Zoom meetings are now stored in your Panopto account. Uh, that said, you're in control of management of those recordings. If you don't need them anymore, you can delete them. So that's really up to you. What I would say is that you need to make sure that those permissions are open enough for students to access it. Remember, the default here is that the, set, the videos are restricted and Panopto tries to define the permissions from your eConestoga course, but in this case, there is no eConestoga course to associate it with. So what you can do, depending on your threshold for comfort or depending on your preferences, is you can change that to a public link and then just post it in your course, or you can set it to be restricted and post it in your course. Your students are gonna have to sign in I don't think it drives the single sign-on from the Econestoga shell, but I'll double check with the Econestoga team about that before I uh, make a final statement about that one way or the other. So your Zoom links now, you would change the permissions uh, and then use that link to post it where is appropriate in your course. Are there any questions that I can answer about Zoom meetings now being recorded into Panopto? Um, I tried to open mine and I just I just see three of them, not all of them, not all the classes that I have given. Uh, so if you're not seeing everything that you feel like you should be seeing, I would reach out to the eConestoga team about that. Okay. All right. Okay. Econestoga is supporting um, Panopto. We know that their support model is really fantastic. They're a great team. So we can look forward to, to having a really great customer service experience with that. Yeah. Leopold, I see your hand is up as well. Uh, again, as of September, the, the Zoom video will be deleted once the Panopto uh, version is uh, created. I think the Zoom version, the Zoom recording will not even occur. It'll just live in your Panopto account. So there is only the Panopto option, which the only way the students can see it is through your Conestoga shell. Yes. Uh-huh. 
well, you know, my issues well, there. The only like, way that students can see it is wherever you post the link, Leopold. So Panopto, your Zoom meetings folder is not derived from permissions from a course. It's just a folder that belongs to you hmm. as the instructor. So wherever you post that link is wherever it becomes available to students. So I don't have to put the video right into Econostoga. I can just simply put the link as I did before. You get to control where that link goes. Is all yeah, it but, all on but that. the video itself isn't in Econostoga. No, it's in your Panopto account, which you have full control over. Aha, uh -huh. okay. I like that option. Thank you. Yeah. Deb, can I answer your question? We were getting some good questions today. Thank you all for these. Uh, and then after this question, I'm going to dive into the edit functionality because there's a lot of goodies in there and I want to make sure everyone gets it. I think my question is similar. Uh, what I have been doing is creating uh, orientation videos for new students coming into the program. And I usually send it out a few days before the course starts. So I am not spending weeks tech shooting. I so <laughs> I have been... Uh, I'm still doing that. I I created in QuickTime upload to YouTube and then just send them the link because they don't have access to the course. You can do that with Panopto too, Deb. I can. I just need yeah. to put it as public access then. Public unlisted. Yeah. Public unlisted and send them the link and they don't need to have access to the course or anything. No. And if you so, have any videos in YouTube that you want to pull over to Panopto too, you can do that as well. And okay. just update the links and you are golden. Okay. I have a lot in there because all of their assignments, I, they're all in YouTube. Really rich things for your students. Okay. You. Thank you. Okay. Lisa, last question. And then we're getting into editing, my friend. Yeah. Mine was just really quick. It was just a, when did they start converting like this, the Zoom to, or copying the zoom to panopto just because i don't see any zoom but that could be just because i haven't done any since they started so they started uh around success week of this past semester so the winter semester success week and then the transition will occur i believe in intercession so not mid-semester or anything but in intercession of august so the upcoming intercession that's when the recordings will then record only into panopto Okay. All right. Okay. Let's take our next step. So you have a video in your Panopto that you want to edit. And I'm just going to bump back into my sandbox because I have uh, different videos in here that I want to demonstrate differently to you. So I'm going to open up two different videos and I want to show you the different ways that Panopto records compared to like Zoom or something else. So let me hit two edit buttons here. So the first one is I'm gonna show you just like a random upload. So this is just a video that I took with my device, right? And I just recorded it. I think I used PowerPoint to make this video, like uh, just the screen recording was built into PowerPoint. Uh, it might've been Zoom with no video, but I don't think so. Okay, so here I have a little tutorial video about how to do something in Excel. Um, and you can see along the side here, this, if I shared my students the link to my video, this would almost exactly be what they see when they open the link. Okay, so this is what the Panopto viewer looks like. It's really different than YouTube, right? Like it's not just here's a video, add some comments kind of thing. It's a much more complex system. Panopto is capable of being a video instructional tool, and so it offers more to us. You can see along the side, I can do things like add details or a description to the video if it's helpful for me. I can add tags if those are gonna be helpful for me organizing my videos and my courses. Contents, this is something that's really interesting. And so I wanna spend some time here. It can be really helpful. Sometimes we have long videos. We just have, it's just a thing that happens. It can be really helpful to chunk the learning by using the contents to create a table of contents or what Panopto calls chapters for us to see the segments within the video itself. So you can see that I've added these contents or these chapters of adding tables, which is at the zero zero um, timestamp for this particular video or copying and pasting data, which is at the 22nd timestamp for, for the video. And this lets students jump around to just the information they need 
especially if you have a larger video. You can see that I can continue to hit that play button, advance it to any part of the video that I might want to have a chapter at, and then enter a table of contents. And that happens at whatever moment the video is frozen to in the player side of things. If I wanted to, I could turn on smart chapters where Panopto uses AI to watch through your video and see if it can figure out where the chunks are for you. Sometimes I really like smart chapters because it's an efficient way for me to build chapters onto my video. I can just delete the ones I don't need, rename the ones that need to be renamed, and it's kind of all built for me. You can get really fancy in how you build those chapters. So previously, previously I believe it was Heidi was asking, well, I want to like put something onto the video so that students see it. You have the ability to add a table of contents. You can put in a quiz at a moment in time. You can link over to another YouTube video if you want, or you can add a link. Panopto does generate automatic captions for you. Please review them and make sure that, uh, that they actually don't say gibberish. For example, econistoga. I have a running list of all the wrong ways that AI tries to recognize the word econistoga, and it's really funny. Um, so here are the captions for you. If you need to add something or clarify, you can do that in the captions area. Audio descriptions if necessary. And you can do more cool things like add in your PowerPoint slides as its own feed, add in some quizzes, cuts and streams. So there's lots to play with here. But <clears throat> the basic thing that you might be looking for is, hey, I just wanna like watch my video and remove all those ums that I do or remove that chunk where we were on break but I forgot to hit to stop the recording. And so you do that by using the player view over here. You can see you can just hit play to advance to any part of the video. You can also just jump around if you'd like. And you can see that when I jump around the red marker below on the timeline, I don't know why I'm pointing to my screen. <laughs> you can't see me pointing. Uh, I'll just continue to use my mouse. But the red marker shows you where that time moment is on this particular timeline. So the timeline along the bottom tries to show you the whole scale of the video. So it tries to scale it out properly. And this little scissors here is the cuts. You can see I already have one cut here on this video. I, saw, I said, this is the section of time that I wanna chop out. And I'm just gonna advance the time a little bit so that you can see what happens when I get really close to that cut. So Panopto is a little bit unique in that when you put in a cut, it doesn't destroy that chunk of video. It just kind of puts a layer over it that says, don't read this part. And so that's why it's grayed out here. But you saw that the red marker when it moved just basically skipped it over. So when you turn on the green scissors, anywhere you click and drag creates a cut. So you can watch the video, find the chunk that you wanna cut, it's right here to here, and then it's cut, it's done. That's editing in Panopto. You have the ability to watch the videos at a faster speed if you need to kind of move through it a little bit more quickly. You can zoom in on your timeline if you need to in order to get more fine or refined with how the, the moment at which you're doing your cuts. And you can do things like preview the cuts or not as you're playing it back. So once you apply those changes up here at the top, they apply live in the Panopto link that's in your course. Laura, I see you have a question. Yeah, thanks, Jessalyn. Just a real quick one. Um, so let's say I cut something and I, oops, I cut more than I had intended. Can I undo? All I want to know is undo. That's that's my yeah. key. Okay. So I have a cut here. I don't want it anymore. I just reduce it. Okay. Until it disappears. Wow, that's easy. Okay. I know. I know. Like if all we wanted to do was be able to trim our Zoom recordings, now we have it, right? Yeah, like on QuickTime, I want to jump out of a window when I try to do this stuff. So I'm really happy that it's so, so simple. Oh, I'm glad. Yeah, maybe Deb might be empathetic as well. She's trying to do the same thing. 
Yeah. Deb, I see you have a question as well. Does it follow Laura's? It does actually. Um, so in quick time, the editing is a nightmare and you cannot stop and start once you start recording. Can you stop and start recording in this software or do you record the entire thing and then go back and edit? You can do either. Oh, so you can great. pause your recording or you can go back and edit it. So you can pause. That's lovely. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Katrina, I see you have a question as well. Yeah, it was it was sort of I, I, you may have answered it. Um, I had shared when the screen share question that I had asked earlier was specifically related. I had had a, a student's data up when I did the screen share and it was tiny, but you could still it was still a privacy issue. Um, so you could just cut that section out and then yeah, would, you could just take that chunk right out. OK, and I had put it in the chat, but it, you didn't notice if if it's auto generating captions can you edit those auto-generated captions or do you have to add like some sort of new ah awesome yeah that's what you can about. absolutely edit the captions and i'm so sorry there's been really good questions with our hands up and i shouldn't be neglecting we're, my chat we're, you're busy it's okay <laughs> okay can we share it so some of these i think i've answered um okay i see can we share the link with public option uh, in Outlook, like we share links for Zoom videos, the answer is yes. So that link is yours, it's public, it can be shared anywhere that you deem fit, which I think we talked about. Uh, I send a link to new student orientation we got there. Can you change the auto? Yes, the captions are editable. Uh, can you set up multiple languages on a video? I don't know that one, so I might have to ask. Three seconds, there we go. I just want to make sure you can still hear me. I had to switch out my uh, my headset. Okay. So if I missed any questions, please post them again, and I'll keep my eye better on the chat window. I apologize for that. Okay. So this is what uh, any video that you might just upload into Panopto looks like for students. Now what I want to do is show you what it looks like and how it's different when you record the video directly from the Panopto recorder. Give it a second. Let me jump try. back to my PowerPoint. Okay. So this is obviously me doing the workshop uh, a different day, but same topic. This is what's different about recording in Panopto. Remember when you were doing the screen share in the web uh, capture for Panopto, it had the preview of your webcam. That's the worst still moment that I probably could have passed that video at, but it's whatever. <laughs> here's my video feed and here's my screen recording feed. So Panopto, like I said, is trying to make a virtual classroom feeling out of a recorded video. And so we've got our person here and we've got their screen here. And students, if they want, they can flip them back and forth. Students can see the captions down here along the bottom. There's the ability for students to have discussions. There's the ability for students to take notes. It can be a much different viewing experience for students. Uh, and let me just pull this open. Well, I don't think I can pull it open in a, in a previewer. But so it can be a much different experience for students when they're watching this and they can have, they see you, they see what you're showing them. And then they also have the ability to just kind of work on their information here. Let's turn on the smart chapters. This video has no smart chapters. That's okay. Okay, let me generate a public link to this and pull it open in a incognito mode. There we go. There we go. Okay, so if you linked to a Panopto video in your courses, this is what students would see. In the embed option, it looks a little different, and I can show you what that looks like in just a second. But they see details, caption, discussion. So students could post their discussion postings right here on the video, ask questions right here on the video. And if I had built a quiz onto this, they could also answer those quizzes. And the quizzes in Panopto tie to your grade book. So I hope that that's nice. So this is what it looks like to them. They can switch the feeds if they would like to see more of the in-person view or the page view. Uh, and that's what the experience is for them. 
Are there any questions that I can answer about the experience of viewing Panopto from students, the act of editing videos in Panopto? Deb. Quick question. When you were showing the students can type in in the uh, contents piece there, yeah. How are you notified if a student has um, typed in a question or something? Because these are pre-recorded videos. How would you know if they're typing or asking a question? Well, no, there's no okay. notifications. So you'd have okay. to check it. But part of the presumption too is that it's a discussion among students about the video. Okay. Another thing that you could consider is, do you want to post the questions on Panopto and then students can answer them? So it could be a sort of a discussion guide that way as well. Sort of like, it's just a video, uh, a discussion forum built around your video. Okay, perfect, thank you. Yeah, so you would look for ways to incorporate that into the teaching so that you can come back to it to catch anything you might've missed. Yeah, Katrina. Um, sorry, so, when you're doing your editing, and maybe you covered this um, because there was mention of a pause, can you clip a section of the audio and the screen just doesn't change? Or do you, when you clip a section of the audio, does the screen also get clipped? So your video feed and your audio feed are tied. I see. Auto. Yeah. So it's a little bit unfortunate in that reserve respect like I asked that same question when I was getting the training from the Panopto team and there's no way to detach you can see so in the Panopto recorder you can see that here's my video of me like my video camera and here's my audio and they are all one stream yeah. but I have as a second stream my screen share so my screen share can live autonomous but no, my video and my audio are tied. I see. Okay. Yeah. Um, and you can do the the recording without your without your video, right? You can no. do your camera off and just do audio. That oh, might yeah. that might solve some of the problem. It might, um, yeah. And then you would have your audio separate from the screen share. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, so and that then might be exactly what you're asking for. Yeah, which which could solve the problem. Yeah. Okay. And then this grade book business. Um, are you are you said the quizzes so so for example you could ask questions or you can type questions along with the video and then they can type in response or they can type in response and then it links to the grade book is, is so that the, the discussions don't tie to the grade book it's the interactive quizzes i see that tie to the grade book so at different points in the video, you might say, um, oh, I'd really like to ask them sort of like a knowledge check question just to make sure that we're in the same place. And so at, when you're watching the video or re-watching the video, you would advance to that spot in the video, click add a quiz, and then you can build multiple choice, true or false, multiple selection or fill in the blank style questions. So not like super rich, robust question types, like you might get a Mentimeter or something else, but you do have the ability to do a knowledge check that you can then associate with a graded item if that's part of your course outline scheme. It, yeah, it, it gives you a lot. I mean, that that's fantastic. I'm in the OLC, so this is fantastic. Oh, Katrina. Oh, yes, you are. <laughs> and then something to consider as well is that um, an Econostoga discussion forum and a Panopto discussion forum built onto a video are equally as supported by the college. And so if there are grades in the course outline for discussions, particularly online discussions, why couldn't those be discussions in Panopto? But you said that they're not, sorry, I have those are not tied questions. to the grade book. That is a manual grading process. But they're also, you're also not notified um, that that students are discussing or that they're flagging you or asking questions. No. So it would it be uh, do you have that's a great question. So I think when you're signed in, you can at someone. Okay. So you can use the at symbol in their name to call them into a discussion. Okay. Yeah. And then I see Laura has a question as well. Thanks. 
Thanks, Jessalyn. Um, just one quick thing. I took a, an online course at University of Alberta and they had this same system where, you know, they, there would be some lecturing happening and then there would all of a sudden be this quiz that you had to complete. It wasn't tied to a grade book necessarily, but you had to complete that to then move on to the next part of, of the video, which is, so it was interesting because it was making sure, you know, you weren't sleeping through the video. You had to interact with it and you had to be understanding it. Um, just the question I had in terms of discussion. So if I have, say I'm teaching two of the same course and I create a video and I post it on both of those shells and then I'm gonna reuse this recorded video as well, let's say, those discussions, How what happens to those discussions that students are having? So um, you have a choice. So when you create, let me just step back here. So when you create a video in Panopto, and you're asking me a really great question, so I don't know the steps like off the top of my head, but I can send along a follow-up resource that helps with this. But when you, um, there it is. When you create a video in Panopto and you have it in a course shell, and then you might copy that forward into other shells or use it across sections, you always have the choice whether when you copy that video, you want it to be a standalone copy only belonging to that particular course, or if you want it to be a reference copy where all courses refer back to an original. Okay, so that is completely your choice and that you would set that up here um, in reference copy or clips referencing. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, good question. Thank you so much. Thanks. Laura. Yeah. Okay. So we, uh, I see one more question that I want to address in the chat window, because I did promise I would do a better job of taking care of that. Um, so can you add sections of the video when you're editing? Can you take chunks of the video and move them around to different timestamps? And the answer is unfortunately no. So you can't take chunks of the video and move them around. But what you can probably do is take the different cuts. So you could have, uh, you could create a duplicate of your video, bring it in as another stream or as another cut, and then take chunks of the video and move, move them around. It's a little bit more of a complex editing process. Panopto is really intended to be very like simple in its use. And so um, editing and moving around chunks relies on having more than one copy of the video to work with. And Laura, I see you have your hand up again. So sorry, I don't, I forgot to lower my hand, my apologies. Okay, and then I see a question about how many cuts can you make? Do you mean how many edits to a video or how many uh, different streams or cuts can you have going? It was related to what you had just said about like if you're gonna maybe have information grouped into different sections, you make a duplicate copy of that video and then you can cut out one section and have it that as the secondary and, and and maybe have a tertiary like how many levels can you have so that you could differentiate them like do you that's know a, that's an olc kind of question isn't right. it so that's <laughs> i'm just i'm just i don't thinking, know I, i've I, never really tested the boundaries right yeah i see i'm just thinking that if if you do have to change the order of your you know um your video, basically, if you can take sections, I guess you can find out the hard way by trying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So there's a lot that you can test out with that I have not tested that with. Um, and you can no let words. me know as soon as you find out. But I would assume, you know, somewhere between three and six, you're going to max out even on your space below here at the bottom. And is there a maximum duration of video? Nope. Not that I'm aware of. We have unlimited storage capacity, and I don't think that there's any caps for, for length of video. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Okay. So we have gone on some interesting paths here today. Uh, I hope at least what you've taken from today is that you have the ability to either upload or directly store any videos that you might like in your Panopto accounts. Your Zoom uh, recordings are uh, for the future, in the near future, are going to automatically store to a Panopto account. You want to put Panopto into every, um, every course that you might use it in. 
Um, and certainly putting it in your sandbox is a good way to have access to all of your Panopto accounts if you want to work that way. Um, let me just jump back to my presentation and I want to touch on some of the following activities that you could direct yourself into if you want to take your learning that way. One of which is that there's more advanced editing features than obviously what I've shown today. We've just kind of scratched on the, the basics. The next is that you can create assignment folders. I've used this in some of our micro credentials to, to some success, where if you want students to record a video and submit that to you, you can just set up a folder, a Panopto folder in your course where students can do that. And that's a really nice way to kind of clean up that experience of students even needing to learn where do I store my video? How do I share the link? How do I do all these things? Because it really for them just looks like an upload. There's also uh, some things that you can do with the stats and analytics if you're interested, if you're kind of a, a data geek about learning, but you can see who's watched the video, how much they watched, the, the parts that they seem to gravitate towards, which can really help you understand what are the concepts students are getting, which ones are they struggling with, or which seem to be the high value resources or sections of a video. So you can get all of that in the stats and analytics. And again, all of that lives in your Panopto account on the video itself. You can construct a, a folder, um, like a submission folder. I have, uh, I have one somewhere here. I think I did the video assignment folder was just here in the settings. Create assignment folder, pretty straightforward. You know, I'm, I'm in the folder for my course and I want that folder to have a, an assignment folder. That's it. Uh, the edit button is where you can continue to tinker with deeper editing skills. And the stats button is where you can see the statistics. This delete button, if you use the delete to get rid of any of your videos, you do have a 30 day recycling bin in your Panopto account. You're going to need to go into your settings to get there. After that 30 days, it is gone. There is no backup. So just be aware that uh, you are in control of your recordings here in Panopto. You can post them where you would like by generating an appropriate link. Um, and you would download and use the Panopto app on your phone and sign in using your Conestoga email and password. We do have a, a single sign on for that. So I hope that answers Mariana's question in the chat window as well. Now, we have gone through a lot today. I'm going to one last time make sure that I share the Panopto resource on our faculty learning hub to you here in the chat window. This one page resource has everything that we have collected so far about Panopto. You can see that we've got a three minute introduction. What is Panopto? How do I use it? In case you're sharing along to a colleague that wasn't able to attend today. A little bit about how to put your folder into eConestoga how to upload videos, recording videos, editing them, how to link or embed in your course. And there's even more about video quizzes, student assignment submission, the video analytics, and more, including a piece about how you can support your students in using Panopto. The library services has at their digital skills toolkit has tutorials for students in using Panopto including the assignment submission folder. Everything you need is here on this one page. I hope anyways, if you need more, just tell me and I'll put it on the page. Okay, all right. So I'm gonna skip over these principles of uh, effective video introduction because we're right at the end. And I wanna do a little final activity exit ticket. I want you to think for yourself, you don't need to tell me, has your comfort level with creating your own videos changed? That was the objective for today. I didn't want to, I just wanted to help your comfort level with today. And in the chat window, I'd like you to tell me briefly, what next steps will you look to take in order to deepen your use of Panopto? And I'm going to use those to inform my intermediate session that'll be coming hopefully for August and September when many of you might be returning or looking to advance your own skills. So what next steps will you look to take in order to deepen your use of Panopto?
<laughs> practice. Yeah, practice is key. Creating assignments, wonderful. Using it for assessment, just playing with it, wonderful. Whatever that looks like for you, just know uh, that I'm here to support you. The teaching and learning team is here to support you. Econistora is here to support you. We as a college are here to support this tool. Uh, to summarize, we've added Panopto to a course. We've overviewed Panopto storage and video creation, compared Panopto to Zoom a little bit, and experimented way, with ways to use Panopto to support our teaching or our assessment intentions, and set out some intentions to use the, uh, this new tool a little bit more deeply than we, we might have thought that we were going to get to even in one session. Uh, I'm so glad that this might be a little bit streamlining for many of you. Uh, if there's any way that we can, in teaching and learning can be of support to you as you try this new uh, tool, just reach out and let me know how I can help, okay? Thank you all so much for coming to today's session. There's another session after this in about 15 minutes. I hope you'll be taking up us, taking us up on that offer. Uh, and I look forward to seeing what you do with this. Thank you, Leopold. I love the thumbs up. Trina, I might've missed your question. I think it might be higher up. No, no, I just said, sorry to be so questioning. Oh, I like it. 